you make the video now. How to do my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, we're going to talk about serverless. How does it work? What is it? How can we make it fast as well? I'll show you some coding examples. It's going to be a good time. And there's some announcements that have been happening this week. Ooh, Vercel released like three new services. They have uh, like a Postgres database service that they provide, a caching one and an uploading one as well, like a storage unit. Awesome. It's so pricey though. Goodness sakes, they don't even give you a server. It's all serverless. Why are you praying? He's trying to run things on the edge. Good luck. Before we talk about serverless, let's talk a little bit about servers. So yeah, if you've done any web development before, you probably saw people make a node app with Express and then host it on a VM somewhere on like DigitalOcean. And yeah, that's it. So you have the server running and then if you make any API requests to it, it's gonna just instantly fetch back the data. The problem lies when it comes to a little bit when it comes to scaling and traffic. So let's imagine you have a large amount of traffic just hitting your application all of a sudden, right? And if you're running like a shitty server with 512 megs of RAM that could barely run Minecraft, well, you're not gonna have a good time. You're just gonna have a bad time. So now the downside of this is that from this point on, you need to focus a bit more on infrastructure and you kind of just start coding stuff out if you have that traffic coming in. So you have to throw more RAM and just more CPU power and storage of it. Um, and also if there's no one visiting your website, that server is running 24 seven. So you're still incurring loads of costs to it, which is unfortunate. Okay, so let's talk about serverless. So when you're working with Next.js, you probably saw in your API folders, you have these route handlers. And essentially, there are just some functions that could run some code for you. And rather than pushing up a server yourself, you are just hosting those functions on AWS's or maybe Vercel's infra. So even though the name suggests serverless, there's still a server that you're just not handling yourself. And the way it works is when a request comes in from a user to your website, uh, you can hit an endpoint from those route handlers. And when one of those route handlers gets hit, um, Vercel is going to do this automatically for you, where they're going to create an instance and invoke that function for you. And that function gets invoked, it gets ran, and once it's ran, it's going to just shut off and disappear. All right, it's just kind of like if you played StarCraft before, uh, it's like spawning a bunch of small zergs whenever an uh, API request comes in, right? If you don't have any zergs on your battlefield, then you're just not incurring any costs. And it can also scale indefinitely. So I mean, if you have two enemies coming in and sending your requests over, you can just spawn two zergs and take care of it. And then once that's done, it's done. So that's fantastic. We are saving money. We're only paying for the actual traffic and requests that we're getting in from the users. And we don't have to worry about all the infrastructure stuff to set up and to scale our application, right? So that's great. Now, it's great, but there are still a couple of things that we are still working on and need to make better. One of them being that these uh, route handlers, these serverless functions have a certain duration to them. So when they get spun up, uh, they only last for about 30 seconds. And then once that 30 seconds passes, it just dies off and it closes off. So if you run something really intensive, let's say you want to, your user wants to like upload a video, right? And that function takes care of like processing and uploading, potentially maybe filtering out, uh, you know, curse words in the video. Good luck. Catch me YouTube if you can. Fuck, fuck. Okay. Naughty. I'm naughty. Okay. So if it shuts down, we cannot process the video anymore. So that's where you'd actually need like a proper express server that just can run for like a good hour or so until you upload the video and just process stuff in the background without running in the risk of this route handler potentially just shutting down on you. And this time depends where you're hosting again. If you're hosting on Vercel, I think that's like 20 seconds or half a minute that they allow you to have a, a serverless function running. And I believe AWS is 15 minutes, which is fantastic. One thing to keep in mind is that it's very hard to pinpoint what's causing cold starts, depending on where you're hosting your serverless functions. Uh, they might allocate a bit more power to them or 
also it really depend on what dependencies you have in that function because if you have some dependencies that are quite slow well that function needs to be set up when a request comes in so if it needs to go through loads of you know like, like prisma for example had a big issue having slow cold starts that's because they had this graphql layer in front of it that had to be compiled and it was just really slow and now they switched over to like a json wire protocol which is really fast so that contributed to a lot of the cold start times okay so i just made a new next application here it's all all fresh so there's nothing in it and i just made a new folder here in my api routes called get feed and this is just going to retrieve some posts okay it's a really simple one uh, we're just importing a prisma client here we're creating this route handler and then we're just fetching all the post and an ascending order and then we'll send back the response and if there's something went wrong and uh, then we can do that cool so what we're gonna do is actually push this code up to github and i'll show you one of the first things that could go potentially wrong so let's just commit this to github we'll name this next speed test like that we'll push it up publish branch and i'll make this I'll make this private for now do with a share it yet. Okay, cool. So we'll make that. So now we can just go to Vercel. And I also want to show you where this uh, database is coming from. So I'm just hosting this on Railway for now because I'm working on another project. Uh, that's kind of like, uh, you'll see soon. You'll see soon. So anyway, I have my posts, my users, likes, comments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's hosted here. So let's head over to Vercel in our case because it's probably the easiest way to deploy a a next step with the serverless functionality. So let's just import our Git repository that we made now. And here you get to pick any environment variables that you want to do. So in my case, I'll just drop in my connection string for the database. So there we go. We'll just hit deploy. And as far as I've seen, there's no way to really select your serverless location when you're initially deploying, which can be a bit tricky because what essentially we want to do is we want to keep our serverless functions as close to the database as possible. Uh, that's going to get rid of loads of latency because uh, we're sending one request through to the server and that's going to need to fetch something from the database. And if that database is located in a whole different part of the world, then it's going to need to go all the way back to that database and then back to the server as well and then send the response to the user depending where, where they are located. Looks like this errored out as well, unfortunately. But as you can see, we could check where this uh, where the serverless location was set up after I fixed this damn Prism error. Oh, we forgot to wrap Prisma Generate. Okay, so I just pushed up my code right now and the first thing I want to show you is if we head over to functions here, you can actually visualize your serverless function. So we have one called API get feed. And as you can see, that runs on node 18 in Washington, DC, USA. And as you can see, it has a memory size allocated to, to it and a size and a maximum e execution duration, which is 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, poof, it goes away. Okay, cool. So let's see what happens. So I ran a couple of tests here and I also run a couple of tests with K6 as well. And we hit a cold boot start here. So this is time to first byte. So basically whenever you get back the first byte of data from the network request. And as you can see on the first go, it took three seconds, two seconds in Amsterdam, 2.5 seconds, but generally quite bad. So if we keep running this again, now you're gonna see, we're gonna get down to like 350, 400-ish, 470. Okay, cool, so that's pretty good. Look at that, now it's 200. Now that the functions are a bit warmed up, that's relatively pretty good. All right, so that's great. So one thing you should keep in mind is your railway here, where is this living? And I believe it's somewhere west if I'm not mistaken we need to check um, and this is in Washington so it's quite close but just be careful to have them as close as possible because you can modify this uh, if you want to okay so check this out if we go over to Vercel and head over to the function region here we get to pick uh, which one we want so we'll probably go to with eu west 
just because my database is in West. But I know loads of people uh, just like might pick randomly, which might not be the good thing to do. So I'll just pick something that would be close to me and just see how that goes. So let's see, we could do either Dublin or London. Let's go with London and hit save. All right, now we're gonna need to redeploy this. So let's head here and right click and do a redeploy. Where's the redeploy button? Okay, so I ran a couple more tests. Now our API function lies in London, United Kingdom, which is really close to me, but our database is still in West Virginia. So now if we run a test, you're gonna see that we're gonna get some pretty, pretty big uh, times here from like one second to 1.5. That's because we're traveling pretty much like double the distance now just to get that data back. Okay, so what are some other ways that we could improve the performance of this and get it as fast as possible? Where well, again, we said that database should stay as close to the server as possible. But secondly, what we could do is optimize this, uh, basically the dependencies that we're using in this function. In this case, it's only one, it's Prisma. And Prisma had quite a bit of trouble with cold boot starts just because of how they had their uh, package set up. And if you want to read more about this, they actually put out a really great article if we do Prisma 9x faster. So let's look that up really quickly. Here it is. So they have this great article written here of like how Prisma contributes to any cold starts. And this is being one of them is just like a node module and that node module needs to be loaded and executed in the environment's memory. Another thing is they had this query engine that had to do all of these input types um, that took a long time to do. And I used this like internal schema builder to do this as well. Um, and with this new switch over to their like JSON wire protocol, it just made it so much faster. And we could switch to that in a super, super easy way. All we have to do is head over to our Prisma config right here. There we go. And at the top here uh, for the provider, we could just add a preview features here. And what we can do is just add that JSON protocol like that. Cool, so let's push this code up and see if we get any performance benefits. So we added the new JSON protocol and take a look at that time. We have 200, we have 240, 190. Of course, we're gonna have like Bangalore and all of these uh, far locations that are gonna take just a wee bit more time to get. Again, it's not a conclusive test or anything, but our speeds are, are pretty darn good now. Look at that, 350, that's not too bad at all. Okay, so there's one last thing that we can do to improve the performance of these serverless functions, and that's switching over to edge functions. And I think that's gonna need a whole video on its own, uh, but just as a quick, like what it is, essentially it's just a serverless function, but we get to run it in, it's like a, it's like a CDN. You get to run it in like 270 different places or depending how much, uh, you know, Vercel gives you or AWS gives you. And, since they're spread all over the world now, if you make a request, the user is going to make a request to uh, the edge function that's closest to them. So it's not going to reach out all the way now to San Francisco to get that data. It's just going to hit the local edge function that's nearest to them. So I'll do a test, but just so you know, it's really limited now and there's packages trying to make it work with edge functions and stuff like that. And since it's so limited now, just so you know, it's not gonna work in every uh, with every node module. So I just kind of use Prisma here, right? Like that. Uh, there's a way to get it working, but it takes quite a bit of setup now. So I, I just recommend waiting and seeing how it goes, but we can do a response here. Let's do this. I'll just make a handler here like that. Hold on, I had an example here. And we'll just respond with this, okay? And we'll just do a return response of that rather than this whole Prisma thing. Okay, so let's just paste that in there like that. Return that response with the name of hello, blah, blah, blah. I'm running an edge function. Okay, and then what we can do is just say export const and we can do runtime. And just by default, that's gonna be Node.js. So we're gonna set it over to edge and hit save. And let's remove this as well. Cool. So let's push this up again. We're gonna run this code and say edge like that and hit save. Now, just so you know, again, edge functions are quite limited. And even though there's ways you could get something like Prisma to run in an edge function, that doesn't necessarily mean it could be good for you in terms of speed. 
And what I mean by that is, yeah, we're spreading these serverless functions all over the world. However, our database and our main source of data is still coming from that one location, right? And West Virginia. So do you remember our first example where we said, hey, if we set our server function to be in London, right? That doesn't necessarily mean it could be a great speed boost for us. Uh, so even though edge functions could potentially fix this issue of, you know, getting data back uh, quickly, if we are connecting to a database, then we need to have a database alongside of it uh, to get that information as quickly as possible. And there's advancements in that and there's loads of stuff you could do, but again, this video is running too long, so we're not gonna get into it. So let's give this a go then. Uh, let's head back here and let's go to the dashboard and let's see, hopefully it has been deployed. And if we head over and check the function now, so functions and we'll, oops, that's just changing the setting of it. Let's go to deployments, click this and look at our function. And as you can see now it's running on edge and it says global. And as you can see, the maximum execution duration is 30 seconds, but look at the size, it's much more limited and the memory size as well. So let's have a look and run that through another test. Take a look at that. Edge functions pretty much get rid of the whole cold start issue. And look at the responses we are getting now. 100 milliseconds and look at Bangalore as well. 100, Tokyo 98. This is fantastic. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me. Again, I'm not an expert on all of these uh, topics here. It's still new, I'm still learning about it, but it's fun, it's really exciting. Uh, and yeah, hope we'll learn more together. Please drop a subscribe as well if you enjoyed this episode. It's free, there's no cost. However, my course does cost a bit of money, but I, if you wanna learn more about Next.js and creating a full stack application, I highly recommend you checking out my e-commerce website where we have TypeScript, we have Next 13.3 running and all the good jazz. So yeah, I'll see you next time. I'll make more videos uh, about everything that's going on now because it's quite crazy.